Hey everyone, Kelsey here and welcome back to Gal. Today, I'm really excited to share with you a brand new film inspired split screen pack that I designed specifically for Premiere Pro, but it actually works in any type of video editing software. So if you don't use Premiere, you can use this pack. Right now it's up on sale on my store. You can go check it out there. There's 17 different split screen variations to choose from. And what's really cool is you can use them not only for music videos or commercials, but you can add them to like opening title sequences for your feature length films, or you can just add them to any standard edit to create a unique look if you have two different angles happening at the same time. There are two ways to use the pack. The first way is to use it as a Mogart file inside of Premiere Pro's essential graphics panel. And all of the split screens are nicely stacked in one place. You only have to import it once. And there's some customization to the film grain and the feathering around the frame with this method. The other method is to use the PNG files, which are essentially transparent mats that you can overlay on your footage. And this method works with any type of software. So I will show you both in this tutorial Tutorial. And before we jump in, a huge shout out to Shutterstock for sponsoring today's video and providing all of the footage and the music that I'm using in this video right now. Shutterstock is the best place to find high quality footage and music, and I'll tell you more about their awesome libraries later in the video and how to search for your footage. But for now, you can check out their libraries just using my links below. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in and show you how this pack can work for you. When you first download the pack, it's going to be a zip file that you need to uncompress and there will be three different folders for you. There's an instructions folder which has a PDF with step by steps of how to use the Mogerts and the PNG files. And then there's a second folder that contains the Premiere Pro project Mogert file. And the third folder contains all of the PNG files. To import the Mogert, open up Premiere Pro first, and once you're inside of Premiere Pro, you're gonna go to the window menu item, select Essential Graphics. And from the panel, click on the little plus icon in the lower right to import this Mogert file. And then you're going to select the Mogert file from this pack, and just wait a few seconds, sometimes it takes a few seconds just to load up this Mogert. And once it's done, you can then go to the search and search for the title of this specific pack and it will show up. Once it's there, you can select it and drag and drop it into your timeline. This template is in ultra HD resolution. So if you drag this into a sequence that's in full HD, 1920 by 1080, it's gonna ask you if you want to change the sequence settings to match the Mogert settings. If you wanna keep the full HD, just keep your existing settings. And then you can right click on the Mogert layer inside of the timeline and select scale to frame size. And all this will do is adapt the Mogert to fit the 16 by 9, 1920 by 1080 sequence that you're working in. From here, I recommend going to the wrench tool and selecting transparency on. So that way you can see what areas of the frames are transparent that you can add footage to. Right now it's in the single frame by default. To change to another variation of a split screen, make sure that the Mogert is selected in your timeline. And then from the Essential Graphics panel, you can choose which split screen you want to turn on or off. So you can just go through and turn them on to see which one you want to use first. And once you have your selection, next you can move the split screen layer up in your timeline. And you want to move it up in the number of frames in the split screen. So in this case, we have five frames. So I'm going to move this Mogart file up to layer six. So that way you have five layers below it to place your clips. Now, if you don't like having lots of layers in your timeline, I'll show you at the end of this section how to uh, nest all of these layers into one. So 
I'll get there in just a moment. For now, let's go ahead and add some clips to the timeline. So from the project panel, I have some nice dancing clips here from Shutterstock. I'm going to choose one of them and drag it onto the first layer here. And using the effect controls, I'm going to rescale the clip to fit into the frame that I want. And then I can reposition it using the position control so it fits in the frame. You also might need to crop this video so that way it doesn't bleed into the other open frames. So to do this, you're going to go to effects and search for crop, and then drag this effect onto the footage. Then from effect controls, you'll have the option to crop the left, top, right, and bottom sides of this footage so that way it fits into the frame perfectly. And then you're just going to repeat these steps for each clip you want to add into the frame. So I'm just gonna quickly do that and speed through it so we can get to the next section. Another thing to point out is the film grain and feathering customization inside of the Essential Graphics panel. So if you go to the Essential Graphics panel, you can turn the grain on or off just by selecting this checkbox. And if it's on, you can adjust the transparency of the grain. So if you don't want it to be as strong at 100, transparency, you can bring it down closer to zero. Another thing you can do is play around with the feathering. It defaults to a 10 feathering around the frame. If you don't want any feathering at all, you can just move this slider down to zero. But if you want it to have more, you can move it to the right for a different look. So now that we have our first frame done, which is looking really good, let's say you want to use another split screen to the right to then fill in the frames with other footage. Well, rather than going back to the Essential Graphics panel and dragging that Mogert into the timeline again, what you can do is select the Mogert file and you can hold the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on a Mac. And if you have that selected and you drag and release, it'll copy that Mogert. And then you can go to the Essential Graphics panel, select the different split screen variation that you want, and then repeat the process again and fill in all of the frames just like we did before. If you don't wanna have so many layers in one sequence, you can nest these different film frames. So the way it's done is you select and lasso all of the layers that you want to nest. And then you can right click and select nest. And this will nest all of those clips into one layer, making it more easy to move around and navigate your timeline so you don't have so many layers. Overall, I much prefer this Mogret method because you only have to import the Mogret once. It's always going to be there in the side panel of the Essential Graphics panel that you can use at any time and all of the split screens are organized into one place. But if you don't have access to the Essential Graphics panel, let's say you use an earlier version of Premiere Pro before Essential Graphics or you use Final Cut Pro 10 or DaVinci Resolve, this is where you can use the PNG film mats. So in the template pack, you'll find the folder that contains all of the still frame exports as PNG map files. So you can just drag this entire folder into your project panel in Premiere Pro to import them. And then when you open up the folder, you can select the split screen that you want. And once you select it, you can drag it into your timeline. And just like the Mogra version, these PNG files are also in the Ultra HD pixel resolution. So if you drag it into your 1920 by 1080 full HD timeline, you'll need to right click on the film split screen and select scale to frame size. So once it's scaled to the frame size, you can then drag and drop in your footage just like we did with the Mogerts and scale and reposition them and add crops until they fit inside of the frames. Now, unlike the Mogert version, the PNGs, because they are stills, they do not contain the moving image file of the film grain that you can turn on and off inside of the Mogret version. So what I recommend for this is if you have your own film grain, for example, if you've downloaded your own film grain stock, you can add it directly on top of your footage yourself, or better yet, if you're looking for film grain, Shutterstock has a wide selection of different overlay film grains that you can download. So I've downloaded four different types of film grain. And what I'm going to do is drag this film grain clip on top of my footage. And from here, you'll notice that it's just black. That's because I need to go to effect controls and change the blend mode to screen. And what this will do is take out all of the black so that way all we see is that nice grain on top of the footage. So there's a ton of different overlays that you can find 
with Shutterstock. They also have any type of footage that you can imagine, such as skyscraper aerials, uh, people, wildlife, pretty much anything you can find, they have it. One really cool feature about Shutterstock is that you can upload an image and search by a similar image. So if you want to find other stock video that's similar to an image, you'll just drag and drop that image and Shutterstock will show you similar stock video to that image that you have. Also, if you're a Premiere Pro user, you can use their Premiere Pro plugin extension where you can search for the footage directly inside of the panel. And the real benefit of using this panel is that you can insert a preview version of the clip first with a watermark before you decide to license and purchase it. So that way, if you wanna show it to a client and make sure that they approve that footage before you license it, that will save you some time and some money as well. One last thing I want to note about the music in Shutterstock, let's say you're looking at video clips online, it'll show you recommended music for that specific type of shot. And of course you can then refine it further using their refinement tools such as by genre, by mood, by vocals, instruments. They have all of those refinement tools. So that's all there is to my film split screen pack. Remember, I created this pack. So if you have any suggestions, if there was anything that you were like, oh, I wish that there was this variation. I wish that there was 16 split screens or I wish that there was a different variation with some more vertical frames on the left, let me know in a comment below because I can add that to the pack. And better yet, if you purchase the pack now, if I add these other variations to it, those updates, you will get those updates for free. So you're in the database of people that have purchased it, you will get any updates continuously. Also, you just need to purchase this pack once and you can use it in any type of video project that you want in any number of videos. So you purchase once, it lives in your essential graphics panel forever. So it's a super great deal and I hope that it's useful for your future video edits. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if it helped you out, if you like this pack. It definitely helps me know if you guys want more packs like this in the future and more tutorials like this. Don't forget to also hit that notification bell and subscribe so that way you guys are notified when I publish new content on the channel. And yeah, Shutterstock, thank you so much for supporting the channel and providing the footage. You guys go check them out, check out the libraries to see if it's something that would be useful to you. My links are in the description. So that's all for today's video. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.